Sorry Star Fortress, the Y-Wing strikes back. What's up Nerds? This video is all about the BTA NR2 Y-Wing. Of course, it's very similar to the classic bomber that dates back to the Clone Wars, but we'll cover its history and interesting stat differences. Let's start with the price. It costs 50,000 and 1 credits more, reflecting the increase in size and tech. Its length and width were both increased by about a Wookiee, up to 18.17 meters or 59 feet long, making it about the same length as 1.5 X-Wings. The width was 8.78 meters or 28 feet, making it about a Wookiee thinner than the X-Wing. And at 2.85 meters or 9 feet tall, its height was about 1.5 Wookiees, or about half that of the X-Wing. The top speed was increased by 50 km per hour, now up to 1,050 km per hour or 652 miles per hour. This makes the Resistance Y-Wing as fast as the Rebel X-Wing, but the hyperdrive and megalite speeds remain the same, a Class 1 and an 80 megalite rating. An R5 series astromech would help with calculating hyperspace jumps, and for just maintaining some of the ship's systems during flight. The weapons are the same, two fixed forward laser cannons, two ion cannons, and two launchers that could be filled with a pair of proton bombs or torpedoes. This is much less than the 8 in Legends, but how much the old Y-Wing could hold in cannon is still unknown. Now these new Y-Wings were often sold without weapons, or just very light weaponry. You see, Coinsair Manufacturing capitalized on the fame of the Y-Wing from its use in the Rebellion, and was marketed as the starfighter that broke the Empire's back. Similar things were done with the A-Wing over at Kuat. The Republic allowed them to be sold to enthusiasts without any weapons, for those who just really wanted to fly around in a Y-Wing, and you could pay for the option of replica armor plating so that it resembled a Clone Wars era Y-Wing. But some with weapons were sold to planetary defense forces, though they still had to comply with peacekeeping regulations. These regulations actually banned proton torpedoes and bombs to be used in this bomber, something that just shows how silly these policies were, but also how much those organizations really wanted to own this iconic ship even if it came in this neutered form. But as reports of the First Order started trickling in, Leia and the Resistance had their Y-Wings upgraded. First thing was just to fill the bomb bays with bombs, but also they upgraded the Ion Turret, giving it much more of a punch. This way they could capture members of the FO, and interrogate them to learn more about this shadowy organization hiding in the unknown regions. Apparently, some of these Y-Wings have responded to Leia's distress call that was sent out on crate, and we see that at least one of them will be dealing out a whole lot of damage in this epic space battle to come. So that's it for the Resistance Y-Wing. Not too much new info, so I didn't feel like it should be dragged out, but I wanted to quickly cover some of the differences, and tell the really interesting story of how the galaxy loved the Y-Wing after the Civil War, and really how Leia evades Mon Mothma's ridiculous peacetime policies. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support our channel without it costing you a thing, or check out our Patreon. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, even companies in-universe are cashing in on the love of their old designs. And the Force will be with you, always.